So John, many of our customers run uh, Windows Server failover clusters. And, and uh, when they're thinking about running that on vSAM, what do they need to know about that? What, what may be some, some things that they need to consider? So what does uh, server failover clustering is commonly used for things like file shares, uh, having multiple VMs um, or multiple instances of Windows uh, that uh, if one of them fails, the other one takes over and you're using a common shared uh, block volume. Uh, it's kind of key to this. There's also uh, SQL can use this. Uh, you see what's a term called FCI. Um, and this has existed for a long time. So a couple things to think about here. So first off, Originally with vSAN, if we were going to do this, we had to use the iSCSI uh, service. So the iSCSI services, it would, you would extend basically an iSCSI uh, a target to an initiator in the guest operating system. You would present a LUN, very kind of like a classic, uh, you know, PRDM style, but or in guest iSCSI based connection. Um, now with more modern releases, we actually have the ability to use a shared VMDK. This architecture had been around for Oracle and other things for a while, but now we have some support for SCSI 3 persistent reservation, that SCSI 3 PR, that allows us to do a shared VMDK so those two VMs can actually use uh, shared bus adapters and, and talk to that same VMDK and cluster off of it. Um, and that that works. So we no longer have to use iSCSI unless we're connecting to physical servers, uh, to which I say, what are those? It's 2021, people. <laughs> it's time to, time to run everything in a VM. But... Uh, some of the things to think about is um, ask yourself, uh, is the juice worth the squeeze? There's still operational complexities in Windows Server failover clustering. Uh, Windows also has the ability to cluster uh, many of its applications now without the need for a shared VMDK by doing replication. Uh, Exchange adopted this a long time ago with DAG when they moved away from uh, CCR. Um, in terms of SQL, you have always on availability groups to where they make a full copy and can do synchronous and async modes. Uh, you also have for file services, uh, they, they have the ability to do various replication, either sync or async, um, and kind of handle that. So, um, you know, if you want to avoid some of the operational complexities or just trust vSphere HA, vSphere HA can be tuned. I mean, if a, if a host blows up, vSphere HA can reboot that VM in minutes. Uh, you'll be back up pretty quickly. So is it really worth adding all this extra operational complexity? There's often considerations on backup software um, and how you have to do agent-based and that agent has to be aware of Windows Server failover clustering. Um, this is a technology that we used to use because, um, you know, if a, if a motherboard and a server died, it took a long time, you know, it took four hours and we were trying to beat four hours, but um, talk to your operations teams and say, say yes, we can do this with vSAN. Um, but also ask, you know, that, that inside question, do we really want to? Now that's, a, I think a great point because I heard there that we have a lot of options, but maybe you need to ask yourself, is this really the way that I want to go in the first place? So that's uh, great advice, uh, for our customers.